We have some dire warnings about Social Security, a new report out coming uh, that says we might exhaust some report, some reserves earlier than expected. You can see right there, so, uh, Social Security reserves drying up for disability insurance in 2016, the Social Security Trust Fund in 2036. So uh, not good news, of course, for many folks this morning. We are, have Michael Crichton joining us uh, for more on this. Michael, tell us what this new report reveals. Well, I think it sort of confirms what we already knew, but sort of puts more onus on lawmakers to do something. I mean, you know, it's been, we've been hearing this for years that these programs are going to be in trouble fiscally down the road. Um, you know, it's it's the type of thing that's going to play in the uh, presidential campaigns, and it does put more pressure on lawmakers to do something, because the, the longer they push this out, the closer we get. And Michael, the, um, you know, this is the definition of an intractable problem what what exactly are the solutions if you put the politics aside you know are there are there recognizable solutions to these problems well i think there are i mean you've seen some of them raising the retirement age uh you know may scaling back benefits over the longer term that people expect to get um, but you can't really remove the politics from it. Um, and actually something interesting we saw yesterday, one of the longer term problems they identified was that uh, real wage growth is going to stay depressed for some time in part be, you know, as we come out of this, go through this slow recovery. So th that's another thing. You know, without growth, without um, you know, that progress today, these pro programs are going to suffer over time. And Mike, we saw the uh, graphic up earlier in the program, but really explain to people that how this disability trust fund will run out far sooner than the retiree benefits and, and how this plays into the whole overall reshaping of the system and what needs to be done, uh, politically expedient or not. Well, and the key to, to understand, though, is that the, you know, the trust funds can run out and then the programs still operate. People still get... Um, you know, roughly 75 percent of the benefits they would today. Now, obviously, with inflation over time, those benefits are going to be higher than they would be the real benefits say. But I think what you're going to see, especially with the disability fund, you know, they've done in the past where there's a way to sort of combine it with the broader Social Security retirement fund. So, I mean, it's not like there's going to be lawmakers always, you know, put into the breach, come up with some solution that will at least keep the status quo so as not to uh, to anger voters. But uh, longer term, I mean, it's it, it is the type of thing where they're going to have to make some tough, politically, you know, troublesome decisions. And Michael, you know, the outlook for Medicare isn't much more optimistic here right now. I, are, we, are we in the same boat uh, with health benefits that we are uh, with retirement benefits? Well, the thing about Medicare was interesting. That was actually where Social Security surprised us to the downside. Medicare actually, the projection from last year didn't change. Now, all these numbers are very murky. Um, you know, they jump around a lot, as even the trustees acknowledged yesterday. Uh, I mean, Medicare faces the same problems we've always known. I mean, demographics are terrible, and, you know, health costs are, gonna, are expected to continue to rise. Now, the administration can sort of seize on this idea that some of the stuff um, in the Affordable Care Act, um, according to the trustees' report, has helped um, if it stays in place. And that's obviously a very politically, politically volatile question. If these changes, which are highly unpopular among a you know, significant portion of the population, are removed, then that sort of changes the math again, and Medicare may be in not as good a position. So I think with both programs, you're just facing a lot of pressure that everyone knows is there, but no one really wants to deal with until some, they have some magic political cover that may or may not ever happen. And that magic political cover, I'm sure they'll be seeking this year. It is a campaign uh, year, and a lot is at stake for both parties. Does that put more pressure on both of them to tackle this? Is this sort of the third rail of a lot of these campaigns, is that they, they push it off into the future because they don't want to alienate voters uh, in a campaign year? Yeah, I mean, you're going to see it brought up by both sides. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, obviously, government spending and the government role in our lives is going to be a huge question in this campaign. Um, now... Are either party really going to go very hard saying, this is what I want to do? I mean, House Republicans have, you know, authored a plan that would fundamentally alter our concept of Medicare. And so are they going to continue to push that idea or, are, you know, are they going to maybe try to avoid that? I mean, that's politically unpopular among a lot of, a lot of people. So, I mean, whether or not the parties really want to embrace wholesale change or at least 
give lip service. I mean, as we've seen, lip service is much easier to do than actually trying to substantive change.